Hi, it's Keith from Cloud Design Box. Welcome to the video. In today's session, we're going to be taking a look at how we can create group assignments. We'll take a look at how we can set up the groups ourselves manually or using Microsoft Teams to help us create those groups. Please don't forget to like, please do subscribe. So let's get over into Teams. Here I am in Teams. Today we're working in a history year 11 class. I'm already in assignments and I've part built the assignment already. So I've got my title in, my instructions are in and I've created instructions for each individual group. So I'm gonna be setting up five groups today. I've also set up my presentation format as well. So what I'm expecting from my individual groups. I used AI to help me create this. Over on the right hand side of the screen, the turn in date and time have been set up. So I'm going to come down the page to where it says all current students. In here, I select the drop down, I get the option at the bottom of the list to select groups. I can manually group students or I can get Microsoft Teams to do this for me by selecting randomly group students. To start off with, I'm going to show you how to manually group the students. So I select the bar, click create groups. So at the top of my pop out, I get the group name. I can change this. So rather than being group one, group two, group three, I can call it red, green, blue, yellow, for example. I also get my students. So these are the, all the students that are working in my class. For today, I'm gonna to continue with group numbers because that's what matches my instructions. So for group one, I'm going to select my first six students. I don't have to select them in a row. I can randomly select them. This is very useful in the sense that you can break up peer groups. You can mix up students who potentially wouldn't work with each other normally in the class to see how they work together as a team. However, for today, I'm just going to select the first six. Choose create. And that's group one created. It does give you a countdown. So I've used... 21 after 27 students. For group two, all I need to do is select new group. So there's group two there. And I can choose my next group of students. I'm going to select five students in this case. And select. I've got 16 out of 27 left to go. So group three. Group four. That leaves me with six remaining students. New group. Group five. So that's all of my groups now created. However, I can still mix things up somewhat. So for example, in group one, I can open it up and Audi, I may wish to take out an update. That puts my one student back into the remaining students area. And from group five, I'm just gonna quickly edit it. I'm gonna pick up Susan here and update. And for group one, I can then reselect it. And I'm going to now place Susan into group one. And for group five, I'm going to add student and move Audi across there. So as you can see, despite the fact I've already created the groups, I still can go back and make any changes if required. If you wish to start again, all you need to do is select recreate groups. That will disband everything. And that takes us back to the start again, where we can then either rechoose to manually group students or we can select randomly group. So let's take a look at randomly grouping students this time. So I'm going to select randomly group. Teams will ask you for how many groups you require. In this case, I'm looking for five because again, that matches my instructions. It will tell me that each group will have five to six students. And then all I need to do then is select create groups. As you can see, it's very quick. It's now placed all of my students into five separate groups. I still get the edit button here, so I can open it up and have a look. And I can always remove students. So for example, at the top here, I can take Georgia out of the group. And I can have a quick look through. Yeah, that's okay. Group five, I'm just gonna take Susan out of group five and update. So again, it's showing me that I've got two students out of 27 remaining to be grouped. So group one, I can add a student. Again, this time I'm going to put Susan in there, update. And then for group five, I can add a student and Georgia 
can be placed in there. So again, I can break up peer groups and put students together who, again, don't normally work together uh, within the class. I select update. When I'm happy, all I need to do then is select done. As we can see, it's now giving me five groups. I can open that up. I can always open up groups of students again. I can recreate again, which will disband all the groups. So I can start again from scratch. So I still get full control right up to the point of when I come to assign the assignment itself. For scoring, I can either give it a points value. So max out of 10. That will be allocated to each person in the group when I come to grade that. Or I can still add rubrics. So in this case, I've got a rubric that I'm going to add. It's an interactive timeline project rubric. Select next. I'm just going to add some points to that. So it's going to be 25% for each criteria. I did get AI to help create this for me as well, based on the instructions for the assignment. Just going to select attach. That is now ready to go. So there's the rubric now attached to the assignment. All that's left to do now is assign it. And then my students can now get started on that piece of work. So I've got a student view set up. Let's go over and look at the assignment from a student's perspective. Here I am in the student view and we're in Susan's assignments area. As you can see, we've got our timeline project. Susan can click on it. That will open it up and she can see the instructions. If she scrolls down the page, she can also see her group as well. If she clicks on the students there, she now has the list of students who she's going to be working with. So it's now down to her to find the group or form the group together and they can go off and work wherever they need to work to complete the assignment. At the top still shows the points and there's the rubric as well. Susan, as well as all the other members of the group can see the rubric so they know what is required of them to achieve a good grade. Just click close. So all that Susan and her group need to do now is complete the work and turn it in. In my next video, we'll be taking a look at how we can grade group assignments. In the meantime, if you found this video useful, please don't forget to like, please do subscribe. And if you hit the activity bell, you'll be notified every time Cloud Design Box uploads a new video. Thanks for watching.